Hey guys, Jason with Surviving Dad Life. <clears throat> Bought me an old pickup. Got me a 93 Sierra. It's nothing special right now. It's a, uh, you know, V6 engine. It's just an old truck. It's showing its age. It's showing, you know, signs of the, the wear and tear over its 27 years of life. Especially when you go to do the stuff under the hood and everything you touch, especially if it's plastic, it falls apart. Now, I've seen a lot of videos, and I do it as well. I restore headlights. I make them look like they were when they were brand new, and I thought to myself, you know, I wonder if you can do the same thing to tail lights. It's the same kind of material. Why not? <clears throat> so, instead of replacing these tail lights, us dads like to save money, too. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refinish these tail lights. They're old. They're showing their age. They're cloudy. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how I do it. Anyway, we're going to start out first. We're going to be simple. It's cleaning the light. I just got me some, uh, just some degreaser, all-purpose cleaner. And I'm going to get the gunk off the light. Just get it cleaned up before I go to doing any kind of correction or uh, any kind of, you know, fixing of it. Because if you go... To clean or to, to restore the light and you've got imperfections on it dirt dust and other crap uh, it'll embed itself into that plastic and you do no good one way you can tell to see if your lights have a chance of being restored and these probably have a chance when the lights dry it looks terrible looks gringy when you get it wet it looks like it's brand new again so that light is wet now and it looks like it's got a sheen to it or a shine, it looks new. So I've got it cleaned off now. <clears throat> Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mask it off. You wanna mask it off that way when you're doing your, your correction, when you're doing your wet sanding on it, you don't hit the paint. And we don't wanna damage the paint even though this truck's gonna get repainted, but this is how you should do it. Okay, simple enough. Now the next thing we're gonna do, and it's gonna depend on how damaged your lights are. I went out and bought just a, an assortment pack of uh, sandpaper. And it, like I was saying, it's gonna depend on how bad your lights are. You're either uh, gonna two-stage sand this thing or you're gonna do it in three stages. These lights, they look bad because of their age, but when you run your hand across it, there's not many imperfections on it. So I'm actually just going to sand it twice. And if I can get to it, I'm going to start with a 1500 grit sandpaper and I'm going to wet sand it. I've got just a sponge. When you take the sponge and you're pushing it against whatever you're sanding, this will form and contour to whatever you're sanding on. Once you do that, uh, it'll also distribute pressure along the sandpaper evenly. That way you're not just pushing real hard on one spot and then, you know, you're not covering anything else on the side. But Now, like I was saying earlier, this is how I do it. I mean, you're going to develop your own ways to do it. So I'm going to take this sandpaper and I wrap it around the back side of it hold it with my finger here just like this and I'm gonna use the same thing I'm just, it's a uh, super clean degreaser it's like the greatest stuff on the planet and this is mixed at a ratio of like 10 to 1 it's it's diluted there's not a whole lot of degreaser on it and then I'm gonna start sanding it
I don't know if you can see this or not, but the yellowing that's on here, where you can, I don't know how well you can see that, but where it's yellowed, that is the oxidation that's on the light that's coming off. Okay, and you can run your finger over it, and already right here, I can feel how smooth it is. But the main thing on this too is one direction when you sand and keep everything wet. Now the reason why we go one direction when we're sanding is because on the, one of the uh, later stages I'm going to be polishing and compounding it and you can get those fine scratches out a lot easier if they're all in one direction. already feel how smooth that is. You'll run your hand over it and you'll, once you do this, when you run your hand over it, you'll feel the areas that you miss and that you need to go over again. Right here. I don't know how well you can see it, like I said earlier, but I'm going over this a second time and there's not as much clouding or uh, milky type look on it that it was the first time. Don't get alarmed when you're doing this and your tail lights look hazier than what they did the first time because we'll knock all that out. Okay, my next phase of the sanding, I'm going to do 2500 grit and I usually finish on 2500. Depends on, I guess the mood I'm in, I don't know. But usually I finish on 2,500 or 3,000. Um, if these tail lights were in real rough shape, I would have started at somewhere like 800 grit. That's about the lowest I go on plastic. But I've started down on headlights before 800, then move my way up to finer grits. I'll go to 800, 1,000 then 1500, 2500, and then finish at 3000. But it's gonna depend on how bad your material is that you're working on. But right now I've got the 2500 grit, and I'm basically gonna really smooth it up. That's a good thing about this sponge here, and since these tail lights are curved, when you rake this down here, you can see where the sponge and the sandpaper are making contact. And if I didn't have a, a pliable surface underneath this, I'd just barely get the, the, oh, the plastic. But since this thing's malleable or pliable, I've got about a one inch band there of where I'm hitting it. Okay, I'm going to 
to wipe this off. And you don't have to use microfiber towels on this. I'll just grab a terry towel. Okay, that is... That's very smooth. Whenever you put, run your hand across this, it'll remind you of, uh, oh, like really clean glass. Okay, and then once you're done with your sanding, you're gonna wipe this down real good. And get all those imperfections off. And that's going to lead us to the next phase and the compound that you get it doesn't got to be it doesn't have to be the super expensive stuff uh, as you can see here i think i paid like five dollars for this turtle wax it works great okay regular drill backing plate with plastic Now this is a three inch pad, the, the norm or the, the, oh, I don't know if you want to call it the standard, what everybody says, is that you put uh, a dime sized drop for every inch in width. So if you got a six inch pad, you'll put six drops. If you've got a humongous eight inch pad, you'll put eight drops. This three inch pad, and I've got three drops on it. I like to spread it out as much as I can. And the reason being is because if you don't, if you've got it all on one glob on your first go, it will spew this stuff everywhere. And it's already gonna spew it everywhere just because it's, I mean, it's a natural thing. But lessen the, uh, Lessen the chance of it by spreading it out. Okay. Then you want to go at about a slow pace. probably the best I've ever done and not slinging this stuff everywhere. Uh, When I do these, I like to do two passes, up and down, left and right, one pass. Then I'll do it again, up and down, left and right, second pass. My pad's getting kind of dry, so I'm gonna get just a little more on here. to speed up that last pass basically because the battery's getting low i've had this drill for like 10 years these batteries are newer but uh i need to invest in a newer the new lithium ion stuff anyway i'm gonna clean this stuff off now try to get all the residue off that you can and at this point, if your tape's coming off, you're all right because you're not going to do anything super abrasive that'll hurt the paint. All right, let me get my other battery. All right, that first pass that I did was with this orange pad. It's more like a uh, 
Oh, a medium cut. A compound is goes great with that. The uh, oh, I'm bumping you there. This next one that I'm putting on is uh, this black pad. is It's softer, and that's for a uh, a finish or well, a polishing compound. It's going to be your last phase. Same thing goes with this one. Three inch pad, three drops. There, three drops. Same thing with this. We're gonna go two passes and spread it out. I didn't tell you, I do like a medium to light pressure. I don't push real hard on this. Um, and on my when I'm going, I overlap about, oh, a quarter of an inch, somewhere in there, half an inch. And the reason why I say quarter of an inch, because it's a three inch pad. So if I do say half an inch overlap, 50% uh, would be one and a half inch, half of that, about three quarters. So around 25%. All right, that's one pass. I'm gonna load it up just a little bit more. Just one more drop. Okay, essentially, now you're done. You've cleaned up the light, it's shinier, the, the rough parts are out of it, and the I mean, the clarity is a lot better. But, it'll do it again. It'll, it'll oxidize, it'll fade, it'll look bad again. So you've got to protect it. Uh, there's a multitude of things you can put on there. There's companies that make aerosol sprays that you spray on um, that are like specifically designed for this. But what you want is something that'll block UV light or UV rays to keep it from fading again. Uh, one of the things I really like uh, on my paint is this ceramic 3-in-1. Um, I'm going to try these out on these taillights. Alright, I think my camera overheated or something. Anyway, I'm going to try out this uh, ceramic 3-in-1. Uh, this has uh, that SiO2 that everybody talks about in the detailing world. And uh, we're going to try it out and just see how it goes. And see how long it lasts. But anyway, you want to coach your uh, your headlights, taillights, whatever you may doing. 
because if you don't, it's like I was saying, it'll just it'll do it again, but it'll do it in a quicker time. Oh man, that's smooth. I love this stuff. If you guys ever get a chance to get you some of this, Griot's Garage, man, they make they make great product. But I'm gonna put a just because I'm gonna put a second coat on there. And uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Anyway, that's going to be restoring your tail lights. You can remove your tape and all that stuff now. You're done. But just remember, take your time. It doesn't take that long to do it. I don't know why more people don't do it. But uh, remember, you're going to have to judge how bad the tail light is or the headlight. Then you're going to have to do one, two, or three passes on. Uh, your sandpaper, that's after you clean it. On your sandpaper, then you're going to compound it, polish it, and then seal it. This stuff here, this Griot's Garage, it could, the sealant that's on here now could probably last me six months to a year. And if the only thing I have to do to these things is reseal it once a year, then, I mean, it saves me some money. I don't know how much these taillights are. I'm sure they're probably 150 200 bucks, But... It just took me 20 minutes, and I have both lights done. It takes longer because I'm talking to you guys, and of course, y'all come around every time I'm working. So anyway, I'm done. I'm finished with my working, so y'all get out of here. You, you bother me. Oh, wait a minute. Make sure you like and subscribe, and then do whatever. Get out of here.